Should we just say screw it and go now? Ready to have a good time tonight or what? Hey, those of you joining us on the internet, thank you to Relics for hosting us this evening. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna play some music. Are you guys ready to have a good time? For those of you at home, it's okay to cheer too. You can be on the couch having a good time too. We're here partying, hanging out. There are balloons uh, with strobing lights in them to give you some context. We're that, we're having that much fun, okay? We ready to hit this thing? Hey, you feeling good? Let's hit it. Hey, one.
That's Kevin McIntyre on the bass. Ian Gray on the trombone.
How are we feeling tonight? Okay, okay. We're feeling good. We have a special guest, a good friend of mine. Uh, who I just, uh, we had been uh, interacting over the internet for about a year, wondering, hey, we should uh, play some music together. And uh, I'm a big fan of what she does, and she said she was a big fan of what I do. And uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, we recorded together for a new Fearless Flyers record. So please welcome to the stage, Miss Grace Kelly. and water colors radio Kevin G on the
That's Greg Skelly.
That's Kevin Gastongway on the keys.
That's Kevin G on the keys. Kevin got somewhere. This is pretty fun. <laughs> Now, as we were leading up to this show, uh, I did the thing that I always do, and I try to do a little reconnaissance and find out who's gonna be at the show. I do some digging on the internet and try to figure out what kind of people are gonna be at the show. And uh, I found some interesting things, and the place that I went to to find the most accurate information about any group like you do in the year 2020 is Facebook Analytics to find out information about each and every one of you. And although some of you think, you know, Yo, bro, I don't use Facebook. I just use Instagram. I hate to break it to you, but Instagram is owned by Facebook. But I think the majority of you know that. And you just are blind to the fact that they have all of your information. And they've given such information to me for free. Now, the information that I was wondering was, what, what, what kind of people are, are showing up to my shows? What kind of people are here? And the most accurate and cool thing that I found was that 70% of you that are here, 70% of you that came to this show, at least 70% of you who have engaged with my page on Facebook or Instagram in the last six months within a 100 mile radius of New York City, or who have replied a maybe or yes to this exact event, at least 70% of you, are creatives by your occupation. So you're a writer, a photographer, a musician, front of house, something like that. You're in the creative field. 70% of you, it's pretty cool. And to the other 30% of you, for those of you that are, that are in the other 30% that aren't in an occupation that is typically known as a creative uh, occupation, you are no less creative than the other 70% of us. Okay. Just because your occupation isn't like, I'm a creative guy, man, I'm so like, ah, oh, man. Doesn't mean you're any less creative. For example, the most creative person on my team is not Kevin G on the keys. It's not DJ Pitar Janich on the cymbals and drums. The most creative person on my team is my accountant. Okay? Many people don't say that an accountant is a creative job. But I tell you what, come April 15th, she has written her opus year after year with a symphony of tax write-offs that allows me to keep my touring business out of the red. Okay? So at the core of each of our being, we are all creative people. Okay? We were created that way. We were created to be creative and express ourselves in the way that we're called to express ourselves. Now, for those of us 70% who are creative by our occupation, the way that our art and our creativity manifests itself and gets expressed out into the world, usually is on the internet. That's how we put out the things that we do. And we're in a unique time in history where at no other point in mankind have you been able to take a photograph that you felt good about or, or write a song that you feel really good about and put it out there, and the entirety of the world who has access to the internet can share their opinions with you about your art. We're in an interesting time. For example, <coughs> these are some opinions that were expressed on my YouTube page in the last three months. supposed to blur, <laughs> blur out their names. <laughs> well, the hits just keep coming, guys. <laughs> now, because 70% of you are putting yourselves out there, I feel uh, a small urge, a message in me to share with you, not because I know everything, but because I'm the one in the room with the microphone you're all looking at. But. Uh, the message that I keep hearing, that I keep wanting to express to those of you that are out there, is that no matter what you do with your art, the photos you take, the music you make, 
the drawings that you do, whether you have 100 followers or 100 likes or 1,000 followers or 141,000 followers on your social media account, it is not going to be the thing in life that fulfills you. It is not going to give, it's not going to be the thing that's gonna give you meaning in your life. And I think the most important thing is that whatever it is that you're making, whatever it is that you're expressing, is a true and honest expression and fingerprint of who you are, whether it be who you are today or what you are in your artistic self today, but part of your, you know, part of who you are and part of your story. And what's important is that we're just all trying to make honest art and honest music that expresses who we are. And I want to encourage 70% of you to continue doing that and not worry about what other people have to say about it, okay? And to 100% of you, to 100% of you in the audience, I have one message, and that's this. Don't be a jerk on the internet. Okay? She's posting conga videos, and she doesn't need to hear your opinion on it. It's like, oh, bro, she's totally rushing the end of four. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, if you don't like the new Weezer record, listen to the Blue Album, that's okay. I think they're still making good art, okay? But you don't need to hate on them for it, okay? It's fine. So I think we can all just get along, okay? My suggestion as a good place to start would be the expose we call Some Kind of Monster about Metallica. Pitar's been watching it every day in the van. And He's been picking up Napster licks, and he's been picking up drum licks from Lars. <laughs> let's, let's see what you got. Let's, I want you to express your honest and true self. I want you to express your true self. That's a mighty bass sound you got there. Well, it's New York, and it's a musician's town, so that means uh, we have a lot of friends that live in New York who are musicians. And uh, one of those friends is here who's gonna join us on this too, and please welcome to the stage the incredibly talented Louis Cato. Lewis played on my last record. Uh, we did a session over at Sear Sound Studio up in Manhattan. He's gushing over 
over Pizarra Nega right now. That's Nega Santos on the percussion back there. What's that? <laughs> it's Nam. <laughs> This cat brought his own in-ears for the sit-in. I like that, man. I like that. I didn't tell you what song, either. Let's do St. Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Hey! Oh! Oh! Hey! Here we go!
Louis Cato on the bass. At those tight, stubby quarters. Ooh, I like that, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, turn up the laptop. Well, we got one more special guest I want to bring up. A good friend of mine that we've been collaborating a lot. Uh, across the pond for the last couple of years, we met uh, after a gig in London. And uh, we started writing together through voicemails over email. And uh, she's here with us today. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Phoebe Cadis. This is the point in the night where I need to sing a song. <laughs> and uh, like I was saying about that tune, Phoebe and I wrote that together over voicemails, emailing back and forth. And a lot of times that's the way the collaborative process works for me is that I, uh, I'm working on writing 
something with somebody, either in person, that's always the best, uh, but sometimes over email. But sometimes the way I collaborate with other artists is that I'll write a song and I'll record it and I'll record a scratch vocal and then I'll just send it to them and they replace the vocal because most of my friends are better at singing than me. Uh, so I had a couple friends that I wanted to work with on my, my latest record and I sent them this tune and I said, hey, will you sing this song? I think it's perfect for you. It fits your range perfectly. I think it's a great message for what you like to talk about. Would you sing it? And three of my friends responded to the email with, nope, not gonna sing it. It's gotta be you to sing it. I'll sing any other song, but you just have to sing that song. Just, just release it how it is. And um, I ended up uh, singing a song on my own record called, Today I'm Gonna Get Myself a Real Job. And uh, I'm gonna invite Scott to come up and play some harmonica with us on this one too. Yeah, go ahead, Gigi. Today I'm gonna get myself a real job. It's time to be a standard working man. Oh, this music thing's been fun, but I think that I am done. Hmm. Today I'm gonna get myself a real job. I'm contemplating getting on the payroll. No stress about what other people think. No ticket sales, no critics, or Spotify statistics. Ugh. Today I'm gonna get myself a real job. Now my insecurity got the best part of me. I'm gonna quit guitar and get a real job.
How about Scott Mulvihill on the harmonica?
Now this is typically the point in the show where we would go backstage and then we'd come out and do an encore. But we are contractually obligated to play until 11.30 when this DJ is going to hit it hard in here. So we have 20 more minutes of music. If you want to leave, you can leave. No pressure. The show can be officially over at this point if you'd like it to be. You have our permission to leave. No, seriously, no pressure. You got a sitter at home, you got to get back. Go do your thing, baby. We're going to play for 20 more minutes and hang out, though, OK?
Brooklyn Mo. That's Patar Yanich on the cymbals and drums. They call him Sweet Kevin McIntyre on the bass. That's Nega Santos on the percussion. Sammy Greenfield on the sax. Ian Gray. Matt Salazar. Kevin Gastongaway. That's Jake Hartsfield back there on the faders. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. What a fun time. Wow, this is really fun. Thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Hit it, DJ.